Hi everybody, this is a red and green arcane bombardment deck. We want to use a lot of cheap spells in the early game, use big score to transition over into the late game a little early, and then play arcane bombardment to help us reuse all of the crazy spells we've been casting so far. This particular version focuses a little bit on token creation, and we're including a few interesting creatures from Wilds of Eldraine as well. We're down to two copies of Charming Scoundrel, kind of a nice catch-all creature that just does a little bit of everything and gives our opponent something to pay attention to in the early game. If we draw it late game, all is not lost. We can usually cycle an extra land with it. It creates an extra treasure in the early game and can make itself or something else a little bit bigger when we need it to. Questing Druid, however, has been a pretty good find for me. We've got the Seek the Beast side, which gives us a few extra options of cards to play when we cast it, especially during our opponent's turn. And then we can put it down and threaten to grow it if we need an extra threat to attack with later on in the game. Over here in the three mana slot, I'm running to Return from the Wilds, a very flexible spell that either helps us develop our lands, creates a creature token, which as you'll see later is kind of important for us, or creates a food token, which can often mean the difference between victory and defeat in the late game as sometimes we just need that little bit of extra life so being able to snack on the go is really handy here we've got three copies of viral spawning because it's one of the closest things we can get to a creature on a spell and we get to repeat it with arcane bombardment later on then over here in the fours, we've got four copies of Big Score as usual, and then two copies of Mishra's Onslaught. I played this one a long time ago, and the fact that it's an instant and we can play it during combat and after blockers are declared means that the opponent often doesn't get to see this bonus coming, and we can also cast it at the end of our opponent's turn to give us a few more attackers if we need it. In the five drops, we've got Burn Down the House. You can see here we're using it as both a sweeper and a key token creator. Creates three hasty devils for us when we need it to. Now, why is all of this important? Well, we've got two copies of Titania's Command, a great way to fill the board with more tokens and just make our small little creatures that much beefier. Add to all that the fact that we can exile somebody's graveyard and gain some extra life gives us a little more staying power in the late game as well. We're running a combination of three copies of Arcane Bombardment and one Chandra Hope's Beacon. Chandra copies the spells and finds us more to cast. Arcane Bombardment helps us to reuse all of the spells we've been playing so far in the game. So let's go see a few games with this deck over on the rank standard ladder and just see how often we can exercise our right to bear arms. All right. I'm going to start it off here. It's a little risky keeping two Titania's commands, but... Gotta give, gotta start somewhere, as they say. It's always a little risky doing just a red and green bombardment deck. We kind of, we kind of get forced into making creatures, since that's what a lot of the green spells do. One of the more effective ways to build bombardment. Ouch! Our questing druid drawing an early lightning strike from our opponent. All right, we've got our return from the wild set up for next turn. Mm, hopefully we can deal with this Seed Shark. I think right now land is the play, and we will also make a human. A couple of clutch copies of Mishra's Onslaught in here. Had good luck with those in the past, hoping to recreate some of that here. As we get some adventure spells in Eldraine. Speaking of somebody taking adventures out for a spin on the ladder, we've got Heart Flame Duelist coming out over here. All right, well, thanks to that ramp, we're already up to five. The plan is usually to get to Bombardment, but we've got a couple of copies of Titania's Command in here. We might just have to start making bears to shore up the defenses on the ground. Let's see what we pick up with this big score, discarding Carpluzen Forest. Hmm, not much there. Another big score. A pair of big scores, actually. <laughs> All right. Well, we may, we may have to just do some more big scores. Oh, a mentor? Oh. Now, one of the few times I did get back into magic, I was playing some cons block. The last time I saw that fellow over there. Okay, we found bombardment with our big score. That's good. This big score is almost free. I think we lose a net one treasure there. We find a couple of spells. That's really good. All right, so we need we need some help. No board wipe. So we're going to have to be a little judicious with what we do here. Hmm. 
It's either play with fire or lightning strike. I'm worried if they have a spell, they can prowess up the mentor. So we're going to do lightning strike instead. Okay, that gets through. I think they could still respond. We pick up return from the wilds, which is not the greatest, but at least we might be able to chump this incubator token. And they can't save the mentor. Okay, that's, that's pretty big. We've got token generators in here, but not too many of them. Mentor just outclasses our tokens, since all those tokens have prowess too. They can pretty handily get bigger than ours. We're going to chump this incubator here. Got to conserve that life. Opponent looks like they want to do something. Yeah, that was good. <laughs> Lightning strike to the face. If we hadn't blocked, we would lose here. As it is, we're going to have another turn, another chance to pick up Bombardment. And luckily that token's right at two health, so we can play with Fire It. Try to get some more stuff going under Bombardment. We get Titanius Command, which is fantastic. We're down to three. We've still got to worry about that Flying Shark. Hmm. So let's make a human... Yeah, hold, hold on. I think we got, we got to redo this ordering. So if we go Titania's Command first, right? I want to exile their graveyard to get a little bit of life. Create some bears. And then we'll make some food. All right. I was thinking for a second I would want to make the human and then put counters on our creatures, but I forgot about the life gain ability on command. So that, that at least puts us out of range of another lightning strike if they happen to draw one off the top. If they had it already, they would have zapped us with it. We know they're playing Heart Flame as well. That's another three damage spell that we can't take. All right, so we've got we've got some adorable little guys on the board. Let's pump them up a little bit and see what bombardment get. Oh wow! Okay, now I think we can do this trick. Return from the wilds. Make a human and a food. Titania's command. Tokens. Pump them up. Titania's Command, tokens, pump them up. And finally, Onslaught goes off, and we can attack straight away with at least three of these things. We got two bears and a human, seven five and a couple of eight sixes respectively. They can chump block at least one of these, but we've got a whole army of bears. Oh, and they decide not to block. All right, good game. All right, this is keepable here. Let's go with this. Got a nice balance of early plays. Start off with our Proving Ground. Okay, another Rockfall Veil off the top. Let's play our second Proving Ground. Sometimes I like to hang on to those in case we draw just nothing but lands off the top. We can keep one in reserve to cycle it away. Opponent with a Moment of Truth. Do they want to be putting stuff in their graveyard? Do they just kind of like that card? It's not too emblematic of what they're playing. I have, I have no clue just yet. We're going to go Questing Druid. See what they're up to here. All right, Restoration. That's pretty typical. Could be Reanimator. Sometimes folks use Restoration to put Reanimation targets in the grave. Guess we'll have to wait and see on that one. All right, well, Mana's humming along. We're going to get in for a one with our Druid. Hope with the druid here is that he eats like a borrowed time or something. Keeps our bombardment safe. Okay, just doing some ramping over there with the restoration. More lands, okay. Well, let's do a lightning strike to the face. Just to pump up this druid and get a spell in our graveyard. Start putting a couple of things down there since we know we're working our way towards bombardment. Uh, I was going to say, feels like a wanderer coming down there. I'm not overconfident. All right, creature gets exiled. I was wondering if they'd be tempted by the block there. They are not, so let's just lightning strike down the emperor, play out this land. Kind of want to hang on to this play with fire. That's why we're using the lightning strike here. If we can get in the right situation with our lands, we can bombardment and play with fire on the same turn. There it is. Opponent with the Invoke Justice brings the Wandering Emperor back and is able to stack a bunch of counters. 
on this architect. That is bad news. So no attacks from us. Just trying to stave off the attack with some chump blocking devils. Luckily the restoration, or the architect rather, does not have trample. Does have vigilance, which stands to protect the wanderer. But we've at least got three turns, barring any removal they've got. And actually this death trigger, we can take care of the wanderer right there. Oh no, a little bit more. We can at least keep it a little bit low. All right, well, I think we're going to go Titania's Command. Let's see, we could do... I think we want to do lands and bears. Like, pumping up the bears doesn't really help. They're like four fours. And I'd rather have the lands so that we can go Bombardment Play with Fire guaranteed next turn if... That's what the top of our deck decides to help us with. Uh, yeah, we'll take a Murex. Shoot, I didn't realize that was any land. All right, we're just going to pass here. Guess we could have tried to get in at the Wandering Emperor with our Devils, since even on their death triggers, we could send some more damage at the Wanderer. But we also have some surprise capability in this deck to come back and pump up our team, so... Ugh. Well, speaking of our team, there it goes, thanks to the Wandering Emperor number two. Some devils go off, we can at least take care of the big one. And we're left with one solitary bear. Opponents coming across again with the Architect, now a 9-10 Vigilant First Striker. Well, I want my bear. We are going to play Arcane Bombardment. We are going to use Play With Fire. Think on the Wanderer here. That's probably the best. And we pull up a Burn Down the House. All right, well, let's start getting some of these tokens back. Until next time, and it, it took a full-on six-mana Wanderer to get rid of our board last time. Hopefully they don't have anything else. Oh, they're thirsting for it. Thirst for Discovery goes looking off the top. I say, I see it. I see you, opponent. Discarding a portal to Phyrexia. This is a reanimator deck. All right, bear's going to block the token. Devil's going to go in front of the architect. We're going to put this trigger on the token that was just created. So like I said, one of our outs here is going wide and then pumping up these little tokens. Oh, come on. Got the portal to Phyrexia for us. Okay, we're going to point a couple of devils at our opponent in that case. Figure out how to get around this portal. Let's discard our land to big score. Oh, that is a great sight under bombardment. Look at that. Titania's command. Let's see. That would have been useful a turn ago. They've gotten Atraxa down there. Yeah, I think we do this, especially if we're going to be able to repeat this. Let's go ahead and exile that graveyard. This prevents them from being to pull, able to pull up Atraxa. Because we we shouldn't have any really good targets for their uh, Phyrexian portal. Most of our creatures are actually created by spells, except for a few that are in here. opponent with Otawara gets rid of our well-stacked bombardment. Those cards are exiled. Starting all over again here. Opponent with just a farmhand draws into a plains. All right. Well, we got we got some good use out of it the first time. Opponent coming in with the big architect again. Let's block with one devil. And we'll just point it at our opponent here. We're going to make another token with the Murex. We get Viral Spawning off the top. Hmm. All right. Holding this land for now. Let's go with Bombardment. 
That is a choose, too. That's interesting on that uh, return from the wilds. But we need creatures. Viral spawning here. Brings back a play with fire. We'll shoot that at our opponent. So right now it's looking like we may be able to start creating more tokens than our opponent can. No attacks yet. If we can pump them up even a little bit, we might be able to get around these blockers enough to finish out this game kind of by surprise. Like our opponents had this big, beefy architect all game. All right, they are still digging. They had to sacrifice that Skybridge Towers. Coming over with the architect again. All right, we'll put a devil in front of it. All right, well, I think what we do here is we take out one of these potential blockers. Bombardment number two off the top. Not sure if I want to do that. Do want to do return from the wilds to make a human. And we're kind of okay on life. Let's pull another land out of that deck. We get viral spawning. Play with fire. Yeah, let's go to the opponent's face and scry. Ooh, burn down the house. That's nice. All right, so... We're making chump blockers. We're setting up the ability to go wide. We're just missing some crucial pieces. Although we might, we might just get to the point through sheer numbers where we've got enough damage to finish this off. All right, so there's some, like, real basic spells down there. We got some lightning strikes. Nothing that pumps the team. So I think we got to wait one more turn. I think we want to make a token with Mirex on our opponent's turn rather than play out this bombardment. Opponent's discarding just gets the Skybridge Towers back. An efficient card draw engine, but an engine nonetheless. Okay, they're passing, and they scoop it up. Too many tokens. Good game. All right, this actually looks pretty good. Good hand for a change. Thanks, Arena. Oh, I spoke too soon. <laughs> I smell a bunch of lands coming off the top. Oh, no. There it goes. All right, let's, let's go with an early druid. Opponents on Esper Colors probably going to eat some removal. No. I always like to test the waters with these druids. See if we can bait out a uh, make disappear, go for the throat, that kind of thing. But no, opponents, opponents playing the long game. They've got a Celestis, so we're probably looking at a control deck. Good times. Get in for one with the druid, promptly erases that damage with the Celestis. See if we can get an idea of what they've got by discarding. They discard a march. And there's a Liliana. All right, it's pretty straightforward control so far. Makes us sacrifice that poor druid. He's just looking for the beast. That's all I'm saying. All right, big score finds us a safekeeping and a viral spawning. Play something out to the board so we can burn down the house here. Opponent thinking over their options. That's a good option. Ashiok, Wicked Manipulator coming down. What are we doing with Ashiok? Hmm, I was hoping you would not do that. All right, so they're looking at the top two. They're going to take one and exile the other one. It's good in that they get some card selection. It's bad for us because that puts Ashiok at six loyalty, and we can't burn down the house away this whole board. All right, we got plenty of lands. Let's discard one to Lily. Hmm. All right. Well, I think we burn down the house then on Devils. We send two devils at Lily. That'll take care of her. We send one at Ashiok. Start getting their loyalty down a little bit. A little bit more manageable. And devils are a great way to pressure planeswalkers because even if they've got blockers, you can still get that, that damage through. We just need enough. Just need enough of it. Ah, so opponent's got this restless fortress over here. 
turns into a 1-4, but has a little, little life gain, life loss trigger on it. An opponent made some nightmares. Chandra off the top for us. Interesting. All right, opponent. Well, we're going to send all three devils over there. I want to see what you do with this first. Oh. Controlly, super friends, planeswalkers everywhere. Are you making a token or are we exiling a creature? Okay, blocking. Nope. Thinking about it. Thinking about blocking. Uh, we're going to next here. Now's the time. All right. Exiling a devil. Well, with no blocks, we could actually safe keeping this devil. As ridiculous as this seems, it wastes their activation and gets Ashiok clean off the board. And then we can follow up with a Chandra here. Can do a little damage, I think. Think we can, yeah, just one should do it. Boop, boop. Nightmare down, Wandering Emperor down. Leaving them with just a token. We're going to play out this land. Celestis getting them a little card draw. Let's see, they could, yeah, they can attack with the Nightmare. Problem with those restless black and white lands, though, is they don't hit Planeswalkers too hard, I don't think. Hmm, all right, opponent with the Sunfall takes everything off the board. Except for Chandra, of course. We're going to add some mana. We will go red and green for funsies. Let's see. Yeah, I think we're going to go viral spawning here. So we get a free copy. It's a beefy 3-3 three, three to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the incubator token. And then we've kind of we're kind of slow rolling a burn down the house. That feel that feels like the right thing to do. Alright, so we got double double toxic beasts. I'm gonna pass it on over to the opponent. These can't be cut down, so you gotta spend a real removal spell on it. Soul partition, exiles one. She's not coming back. Incubator token flips over. Oh, I forgot that was a 4-4. Four, four. Why did I think that was a 3-3? Three, three? All right, well, at any rate, let's put the spawning token in front of it. Keep Chandra around. I think. And follows up with a Sorin. It is a it is a who's who of the Esper Planeswalkers over here. All right, we draw Lightning Strike off the top. That's pretty good. So, all right, got to think about this one. If we, if we burn down the house on damage, the copy is automatically on damage, so we're going to lose Chandra. So even if we plus her to get around to the range of the first one, the second one still hits her. Hmm. All right, show me some more spells. What do we got? A lightning strike, spawning, bushwhack, and another burn down the house. Okay, let's make let's make a whole slew of devils then. And we will take three and point those at Sorin. So that damage is guaranteed to get through. And it blocks a devil. And we'll point a damage at their face. Okay. Huh. All right. Opponents go into attacks. Throwing everybody at Chandra. Let's pass to blockers. We'll put one in front of the incubator, right? And then, any tricks? No? Let's copy a lightning strike then. Point one at this vampire. And then threaten to take care of this incubator token thanks to the one damage from the devil. All right. The vampire one lands. That's gone. Incubator collides with the devil. That's gone. One damage back at our opponent from that. Still have four devils on board. Oh, another eternal wanderer. All right, what are we doing here? All right, so they're going to do the, the, the cute little trick of exiling our tokens so that they never return. All right, let's find some more spells. Give me some more options. 
Onslaught. Big score. Big score is so good with Chandra. I think we got to do it. Although Chandra is exiling a whole bunch of cards off the top of my deck. All right, we find another Onslaught. That's really good. Tons of mana here. Um, all right, let's... Yeah, only one, right? Is this even worth it? Ugh, combat math sometimes. Okay. Everybody at the face. I think we're just going to end it there. So I didn't have enough mana to do both burn down and this onslaught. But onslaught's an instant. All right, so they pick off one more of our devils. If we onslaught at the end of our opponent's turn, we can... St oh, they're tapped out. Opponent goes with Kaya. What's the choice here? Drawing two. We get to scry one. Sure. I think we've got everything we need, though. Okay, they're totally tapped out. All right, well, we can do this. We can do this. We're going to draw. Okay, I think we can take care of all of this on our turn. Yes. This is real, this is real back of the napkin, real quick math here. We're going to double up, burn down the house, right? So that's six devils. We got eight devils on board. We're going to go Mishra's Onslaught. We're going to creatures get pumped up. And that should be a solid 24 damage coming over. <laughs> oh, wow. Good game. Hmm. Okay. A little bit sus, but we're going to keep this one. Tempting me with your untapped basic lands. We got a pair of questing druids, so we can always exile cards off the top if we happen to get unfortunate with our land draws. Well, you're you're gonna do it to me, aren't you? Look at look at the rest of this hand though. How could I not keep this? Burn down the house, command, onslaught. Opponent flashes in a vandal. We're gonna we gotta get rid of this. Play with fire takes care of that. So is this what? Blue white flyers? Blue white fairies? Is that even a thing? Passes it on over. Hmm. Well, we drew our land, so that's good. Let's pass it on over. That'll leave up the option to questing druid on its adventure side. Ooh. Errant and Giada? I like this. I didn't think there were enough cards to build around it in standard, but I like where you're going. Storm Chaser Drake. Love that little guy. Opponent comes across, hits us for two with Errant and Giada. We're going to seek the beast. Sounds like an ad for Mountain Dew, but we're going to do it anyway. Exile the two top cards. Both lands. Fantastic. So we've got guaranteed land number four. Let's play out the beast. Why not? Cathar Commando. All right. Well, kind of glad we did then. Kind of luring our opponent into a false sense of us being a creature-based deck. Fairy Mastermind. All right. So we've got all these creatures with flying and flash that Errant and Giada can help cast off the top. Pretty good. Little does my opponent know, we want to get rid of that, uh, get rid of that commando. No commandos allowed when I'm playing. Takes care of my bombardment. Mm -mm. All right. We have sought the beast again. We have found the lands we are looking for. We can now try to burn down the house. And it gets through. All right. Opponent did not put any counter spells in the deck. Just trying to overwhelm us with some flashy flyers. All right, gets in with uh, gets in with the fairy mastermind. 
No sixth land for Titania's Command yet, so let's just start making some tokens. We got this Mishra's Onslaught in hand, the option to make more tokens in the future with a command. And let's send, I don't know, two in there. Errant and Giada again. Comes in and blocks the Devil. That's going to let us take care of Yuta right there. And we can play out this Proving Ground. That's our sixth land for the command. All right. Opponent's got Errant and Giada. But they can play stuff off the top of the deck, right? If it's the right stuff. Flying and Flash. Silver Scrutiny. That's a good include in there. I might have to look at this afterwards. This is, this is intriguing. At any rate... It is Titania's command time. We're making bears, we're putting counters on things, and the devils are now way bigger, and the, that's it? Okay, good game. All right, we can keep this. It's interesting. We got a proving ground. This is one of the few games I haven't started off with a questing beast. Not a questing beast. That's like, that's like two years ago. The druid who seeks the beast. Do the do, all that. All right, so we'll probably start, ooh, Charming Scoundrel though, right off the top. Yeah, I think it's still Beast. Best use of our mana here. Making a token, it's hanging up on our opponent, meaning they probably got a way to kill it. Yep, go for the throat. Get it out of your system now. There are more tokens where that came from. Opponent's got a Tenacious Underdog, all right. Pretty standard mono black stuff that we've seen so far. Can't quite tell if it's lean in aggro or control or somewhere in the middle. We got land number four though. Gonna have to take a hit from this. But we're ready to big score. Let's discard our scoundrel. Okay, that gets through. We get a land and a Chandra. We're going to go immediate bombardment here. Only uh, since the banning of Invoke Despair, only two cards left in standard that can take out our enchantment. So hopefully our opponent is not playing one of them. Tax again with the underdog. I know better than to remove that too early. Ah, but Trespasser. Oh no. Trespa Trespasser eats the scoundrel? Oh no, you gotta you gotta eat the spells. Gotta eat the spells against bombardment. We're gonna we're gonna go for a burn down the house here. Can't let the tre not dead after all. Alright, trying to save the trespasser. I think this is probably worth it. It might not be, but we're gonna do it anyway. Lightning strike. Targeting the trespasser. Paying the ward cost, we gotta discard our questing druid. Okay, but we get it. We get the trespasser off the board. We're gonna big score. Sorry, Chandra. I need spells to keep feeding the machine. We get a big score. That's a good one. And eliminate that underdog. So we're at 13. We can take a few hits from this underdog and our opponent's going to work on their own life total for us. Draw a few cards with that. But it's only a matter of time before we get some more instants that we can play on our opponent's turn. Bushwhack, huh? Yeah, this, this needs to be something else, but I included one anyway. You know, I thought we'd have tokens laying around, be able to fight some things. That was not the case so much. All right, big score finds us Onslaught. Viral spawning makes a token. Bushwhack goes in. We're going to take a mountain off of that. Play that out to the board. And yeah, let's end it there. We got two instants for our opponent's turn. Let's see what other mischief we can get into. Tenacious Underdog. Okay, that's just the regular Underdog. And another Trespasser. What are you doing to me here? No. 
All right, we're going to big score in response to that. We probably could wait, but I don't want to. Trespasser must go. We pull up, burn down the house. Let's see. Is there a way we can order this? I think there is. All right, let's big score. We'll get rid of Onslaught. Then we viral spawning next. Then we burn down the house on five damage. So that wipes the board. Then we get to make a token. Then we draw two, make two treasures. Then we draw two, make two treasures. Trespasser eats Chandra, who wasn't coming back anyway in this deck. We draw land off the top. All right, burn down the house. Activates bombardment. Might as well bushwhack for the value. Pull out another land. We'll go viral spawning again. Burn down a uh, big score, discarding Carpoos and Forest. Burn down the house on tokens. Opponent's got something going on. Cut down. Okay. Hit our opponent down to 18. Oh no. <laughs> the second cut down. They are on uh, the mono underdog plan now. All right, we find a return from the wilds. Bushwhack, gonna grab us a land. And then the initial burn down the house brings us up to four devils. All right, let's go in. Great, we got, we got instants, we got mana to make tokens with the Mirex. Opponent's got another cut down. Oh, that's frustrating. Good game. <laughs>